you are watching this video on the internet which means your system be it the mobile or your desktop is exchanging traffic with the server where this video is hosted but are you sure that is the only traffic which your system is exchanging what if there are some ports open on your system which are vulnerable or exchanging traffic with domains that you would not want to Hi, I'm Aditi and in this video we'll be figuring out basic networking concepts and explore tools such as Nmap which which can help you give get an answer to these questions which will help you scan your home network and figure out if there are any vulnerabilities which are out there that you need to protect right now. So let's get started. Shut up and sit down. Hello, so uh, let's get started with Nmap. So first of all, before beginning, why would you need Nmap at all? Um, so if you're an attacker, hopefully ethical, uh, you would want to exploit a system, right? Like you want to attack a particular system or a service. And all you have from the outside is maybe an IP address or an IP address range. So what can you do with that IP address? You need to figure out a way to enter into the system. To attack the system right and that is the exact place where nmap comes really handy so nmap is called network mapper it is a tool which will help you get a lot of details about the active online hosts on the ip and um, or the ip range and then what all kind of os that host is running uh, what kind of vulnerabilities are present that can be attacked what are the ports which are open which can be attacked now, if a lot of these things are uh, sounding pretty non-familiar to you, I would suggest you to go to my blog post. You can type aditi.fii, you can go to blog. And here I have written a basic post on the basics of network and Nmap. And this will give you a little bit detail on what all is expected before you use this tool um, and some links on the very basis of the TCP stack, like what was the philosophy behind it. So it will help you in understanding how the tool is operating because it's very easy to just use the command, but it's really important to know what is happening in the background when you use the command. What exactly changes? How does say an SN scan is differing from uh, say dash SA scan? Or how is an aggressive scan different than a stealth scan or so on? So it's very uh, easy to use the commands, but the idea uh, of me doing this video is to get you familiar with what is exactly going on in the backend, right? So let's dive deep into this. Um, we'll be using Nmap book and you can get it online. It's for free. Half of the content is for free online. It's a pretty amazing book detailing each and every feature of Nmap that we can use. Um, and uh, in this video, we'll be covering some of the interesting scans and we'll try to understand what is happening on the background, right? So before beginning, again, um, making sure that you know, you understand when I use the term flags, uh, we know the OSI layers, right? We know these seven OSI layers and we'll be working majorly on the transport layer in this case. So we'll be crafting TCP packets and sending them out. Okay. So in TCP packet, there's a TCP header, there's a TCP um, packet data. So TCP packet is basically called a fragment. And in the header, there are like fixed fields which are usually there. The size of the header may vary from 20 bytes to 60 bytes, but the fields are like this and it has a lot of different flags. So if you remember, TCP operates on the basis of handshakes, right? So before uh, start of the transmission of data, there would be a handshake, a three-way handshake. So how, what is that three-way handshake? It quickly, if you quickly look at it, it looks something like this, that uh, one client would send the SYN a packet, uh, SYN, flag to the other person so there's like hey i want to exchange information with you and then the other person acknowledges that giving the arc flag and then the other person would say acknowledge it back right so that is the kind of things which happen in tcp handshake flag and if you say since in ac and ac what is it exactly it is nothing but the flags which are set in the tcp segment header so without taking a lot of time let's jump to our workstation we'll be using parrot for this video 
Uh, Parrot is another uh, penetration testing uh, OS which you can use. And you will see that I have Wireshark already installed here and Nmap as well. So let's see what is the Wireshark looking like here. So pretty basic. We have at zero, this is a virtual machine. So let me pick this interface and start getting packets from here. So let's go to Firefox and let's try to visit a website and see what gets captured here. Okay, so you see that in the background is packets have started, the capture has started for the different packets. So if you go here, you'll see that hey, there are way really too many packets, isn't it? So all of them, you can just pick one of them, say I pick this one, and you can see that it has all the frames, it is basically encapsulation. It boils down to transmission control protocol, which is the one of our interest. So it has these header values that we just saw, right? Resource port, destination port, um, sequence numbers, acknowledgement numbers, and flags. This thing is really important, folks. This is the one which regulates the different type of um, scans that we conduct using Nmap. So because in most of the Nmap scans, it's mostly um you know a permutation and combination of uh, using different flags so we are trying to exploit we are trying to exploit in such a way that we get the required information be it the ports open be it the host availability or the os details so we do that using these flags okay because the protocol uh, in the background it expects that okay first of all there would be a sin thing then i'll reply back with sin act and then there would be an act so that is the expectation but what if you do not give a sin flag at all what will what if you start with acknowledgement flag what happens then in that case obviously uh, the system will behave in a particular way but can that behavior lead to disclosure of some information that i as an attacker wanted so that is what we're going to see now so let's jump on to nmap um, while mapping your network there are different stages first one is the host discovery uh, which is the one that we'll cover in this video then there is port scanning and then further to get more information of os you have uh, banner grabbing and os footprinting and stuff that will cover in subsequent videos so in this video we'll find more about host discovery Host discovery tells us that whether in that particular IP address range or uh, on that IP address, any machine is active or not. Because if it is online only, then you can attack it, right? So in uh, in the usual cases, so it needs to be online. So this is the host discovery, which basically tells you which machines are on in that. And you can use different kind of um, ping scans for that. You can use TCP SYN ping scan. TCP ACK, UDP ping, ICMP ping, uh, IP, ARP, which is ARP, ARP scanning and so on. So let's dive right in. Uh, I have set up my virtual box. So I have two machines here. One is Parrot Security and the one is Metasploitable. We will scan ports um, for Metasploit uh, using our Parrot, which is the attacking machine. So let's go to Parrot first and let me show you what is the IP address of this machine. So this machine has the IP address of 192.168.1.13. And then we have Metasploitable, which is another machine, which has popped right in. If you're not familiar with Metasploit, uh, I'll just tell you that Metasploitable is actually, you know, a machine which is more so on a terminal front. So there is no internal, like you won't see a normal OS. It's just a terminal that you would be seeing. So let me do an if config here and we'll see that the IP of my exploitable is 192.168.1.15, right? So now let's try to attack this IP from our Parrot machine using the nmap commands. So which scan should we perform? First, let's try out with the basic SYN scan. Okay, so now as, as per the name, it is TCP SYN ping, okay, which means that your SYN flag would be set. So it's an empty TCP packet with a SYN flag and the default destination port is 80, which is configurable. 
um, in the list of ports may be specified and blah blah some more details on that so what exactly happens the sin flag suggests to the remote system that you are trying to attempt you know to establish a connection um, and normally the destination port will be closed and an RST packet will be sent back if port happens to be open the target will take the second step of TCP three-way handshake by responding back with a sin arc TCP packet the machine running nmap then tears down the nascent connection by responding with RST rather than an ACK packet which would complete the three-way handshake and establish full connection so nmap does not care whether the port is open or closed either the RST or sin or ACK response discussed previously tell nmap that the host is available and responsive right so uh, whether it's open or uh, closed is not a very important factor when we are discovering the host so we just want to know whether the host is online or not up and running right so let's try to um, do this for our local domain here okay so let's try to use the tcp cine scan but before that check out in map this is how it looks and these are the different flags that we have here, which we can use at the time of uh, scanning our ports, right? And there are a lot of different flags, which like dash P for port ranges, dash R for scanning ports. And what we are interested in is doing a TCP Cine scan, which is SS, this one. So let's get our Wireshark also up and running and see if we can capture the traffic while doing this scan. So that will help us in actually understanding what kind of exchange is happening between the two. Okay, so let me start capturing the traffic here. So I'm capturing the traffic. It's sending some packets somewhere. Um, and what I'm interested in here presently is the IP address. So the IP address needs to be, what is the IP address of your Metasploit? It is 168.115.168.1.15. So this is the IP address that we're interested in to capturing. So let's put it here. Now uh, let's do the nmap. So this is just, you know, stealth scan. It is a TCP SYN scan. And what I'm going to put here is I'll put it as verbose because I want to see the logs and uh, let me put it as 192.168.1.15. So let's go and see what happens. Okay, it is doing an ARP ping scan. It's initializing parallel DNS resolution of one host there we go okay so the scan is complete and since it's a metasploit machine we see that there's so many different ports which are open uh, then we also got the MAC address and see that from the MAC address it's able to decipher that it's an oracle virtual box which is so cool uh, and what else have we found so this was a sin stealth scan we have also we'll also get some details on how fast the scan was and how many packets were sent and received and so on now let's look at wireshark what do we see here mm-hmm the the amount of efforts that nmap has taken while we just typed one command and ran so what are these scans well, what what is this data exactly so if you see continuously they are like sin 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 it's just sending the different ports it's sending a send request this is our ip this is the destination ip so you'll see that this one we are attacking a source port which is 59893 in this one we are attacking the destination port which is 110 in the above one it's 143 then it is 1993 it is 3306 and so on so it's like so many different ports which are being attacked mostly the popular ports because we didn't mention the range so It'll attack all these ports with send request and then you will see that again from that 1.15 1 which is our IP we'll see that we do get some some uh, packets here see so this is one packet that we have got this is one packet that we have got it is on the same port like this one we sent right and it is saying that hey yes I am 
there. It is a sin ag response if you see folks. It is a sin ag response that the target IP has sent right to the attacker and then what happens what happens as soon as the uh, that thing is, is received the attacker indeed sends this which is reset all right so you can see all the different ports we can also get a reset arc in the cases when the port is not open but it, it still acknowledges the connection right so we are getting reset arc so RST, which is reset, it will stand for when the connection cannot be established. But given that a machine is able to tell us that it is RST, itself shows that the machine is on, which means the host is active. So in our host discovery session, we'll see that host as up and running. So that is what is happening here in this scan. Isn't that awesome? What else is there? Yeah, so it's mostly a combination of things because as per their stats you will see that dash pe which is a icmp ping scan is the most effective for host discovery but then they further um, tried more combinations and have found that a combination of these also work really cool in a, in a really good way so they have found that we can find it out up to 93.7 percent accuracy and let's try one of these Let's see if we can find something more. The machine we have at hand is pretty uh, naive, you can say. So we do not really have to do a lot of efforts. Like there's no firewall running. The machine is intentionally vulnerable. So we do not see a lot of hurdles in finding out the open ports or information about the system. Um, also, one thing to note while it's scanning, because it will take some time, is that I'm performing these scans in root like i have the root access and why is it needed it's needed because you need to create raw sockets in order to uh, get more information especially about mac address and other inf important things so to create a uh, raw socket you need root access and only then you'd be able to um, do so it won't throw an error if you're not a root but it will just not be able to do you know the stealth scan for that matter it'll go for tcp full connect scan instead of stealth scan so those kind of things happen so here we see that, okay, again, we are able to find out a lot of ports which are open. But this is kind of the same information. So what about a different information? Like, I want to know more about it. I want to see if any of these ports has any vulnerability uh, in the background that I can exploit. So how can I do that? Hmm. Let's do that using A dash a which stands for aggressive scan it's a really tricky scan it does a lot of things in the background and it also takes a couple of minutes because it's uh, doing um it's running all the nmap scripts in order to find out vulnerabilities it's also doing service version which is dash sv trace route and a bunch of different things and dash o i think to get the operating system details so it's doing all of that in the background it's a pretty aggressive scan as per the name and the flag dash a let's do it and see what happens also, let's try to clear up Wireshark now and see what are we doing in the background in dash A scan. Okay, I'm able to see that I'm doing some sin, 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 sin. I'm getting sin, knack. I'm doing again reset, reset, act. This is from the target machine. Okay, and from my machine, I again send a reset. So there is a lot of reset flags and in fact this is one of the ways in which intrusion detection systems you know they have some heuristics and protocols to find out if someone is trying to scan the networks or break into the networks and these kind of things really help like if i see that there is a lot of traffic which is basically with the flag rst on it means some attacker machine somewhere is trying to drop the connection and i can use it as one of the signals to uh, you know uh, have an alert that hey something is going wrong the reset flag there's so many reset flags because how many times can it happen that a connection is being dropped um the intention becomes clear on the number of times you are getting the signal and there can be definitely a heuristic around that figure that thing out so coming back to our scan let's see how we're doing here um it is about 95 percent done let's see it'll take some time folks as i said it is doing a bunch of things in the background 
and since nmap takes a lot of times there are also dedicated sections in this book on optimizing nmap because uh, like some commands can even take days uh, just to scanning because there are just so many ports and possibilities of or ip addresses which are, can be possible and you are maybe doing a port scanning on each of that machine which will take a lot of time so there is a dedicated section to optimize and map and that's something that you can use so we touched a bit upon port scanning when i'm doing dash a i'm actually doing port scanning you might be familiar with this uh pop quiz what does port 25 stands for so if you look at it, it is simple mail transfer protocol, right? So having that information, I mean, you get used to it, the more you see traffic, but having this information also helps you in quickly identifying the kind of things you're dealing with maybe on the other end. Okay, so let's go back to the machine and see what has happened here. Oh, wow, our scan has completed. And this scan has a lot of details. So if you look at it, let me maximize it for you. So if you look at it, we did a trusted scan on this local IP and it was able to find not just the port and the protocol that it's working with, it was able to find the exact server. It was able to find that VSFTPD 2.3.4, which is a vulnerable server. If they're up and running on port 21 and you can attack it, go ahead, attack it. Open SSH Debian is at 2.2, which is a pretty common uh, i mean well-known port for ssh it has smtp server running and it also tells you the associated vulnerability if you run the right scripts right and it's able to tell you the exact servers which are running information about the servers the capabilities the sql server information and the most interesting thing that i found was it is able to give you all these details, which is so awesome. So it ran SMB OS Discovery, which is uh, NMAP script. It can, it can, you can check it out in the scripts section, uh, likely with .nse extension. And it's running that and it's able to find that the computer name is metasploitable and the domain name and the system timing, authentication level, uh, and a lot of different things, which comes really handy. Uh, for exploitation so that was all we wanted to cover in this video folks this book is amazing resource to learn everything about nmap so i will highly recommend that you go ahead and read this book and try out the commands uh, remember that do not scan ips scanning ips is illegal in certain areas countries and um, it shouldn't be done without the prior permission of the person or the company um, the ip range of which is being scanned by you so take the permission and do the rightful thing it'll be best if you try it out locally set up a metasploit um metasploitable machine and set up a parrot os and you should be good to go uh, so explore with nmap do a lot of things there's just so much to be done and it's just a small amount of things that we have covered in this video i'd be very happy to cover more of it in the coming video but uh, meanwhile try it out uh, check it out check out aditi.fii for more resources uh, subscribe it subscribe the youtube channel so that you are always updated with everything that we are trying to do here and also we have a free online community uh, which is a learning community where we do things uh, we try hacks and we discuss a lot of content and share a lot of resources so you're very welcome to join that too i'll put all the links in the description and try it out folks have a good day See you in the next video soon. Bye-bye.